Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm your host, Sergeant John Perrine, Public Information Officer for the State Police in Indianapolis. The Roadshow is brought to you each and every week by the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the State Police Alliance. For more information about our sponsor, you can find them at www.indianasfinest.com. This guy here, you might recognize. I found him out roaming the streets this morning, and I thought, hey, why not bring him on as a guest on the Roadshow? So uh, here he is, my good friend. And, and also a good friend of the show, Captain Mike Pruitt, Wayne Township Fire Department. We're still friends after all after all these years. After all still, these years, all these pranks, friends. all these pictures you took on my phone yesterday without me knowing. <laughs> Did uh, I use up all your memory? I, you know, I haven't even checked, but it's got to be at least a thousand. That was my whole goal. Yeah. So, so anyway, here we are, Mike. Big week this week. One of my favorites. I cannot wait to gorge myself on Thanksgiving. But you know what? We got to get there safely first. So, so what do you think? We do. Uh, you know, Thanksgiving for us and the fire department becomes a very busy time uh, because people they want to cook a big meal, uh, have a lot of people over to the home, and people do make mistakes. They lose their uh, attention span. Their attention. They get distracted. Yeah. And next thing you know, we've got burnt food, things catch on fire. You mean the firefighters get distracted or people at home? No, people at home. Oh. Firefighters never get distracted. All right. We are on point all the time. Got it. Okay. So we're um, tracking. Yes, exactly. So, you know, this is our busiest time of the year for cooking fires. Yeah. And so we always try to get out ahead of this and kind of tell people, hey, there are things that you need to be thinking about in the home safety-wise when it comes to cooking, especially if you're having family over. Uh, one is just simply paying attention in the kitchen. The kitchen becomes a very busy place. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves the kitchen. It's where all the good aromas come from when that turkey's yeah. cooking or or whatever you're cooking for your holiday. Um, everybody wants to come in there, sample things. The kids are running around having a good right. time. But that can all lead to a very dangerous situation. So, put one, pay attention. Um, Two, keep, stay out of the kitchen. Stay, stay out of the kitchen if you don't need to be there, and especially when we're talking about kids. You know, <laughs> yeah. a lot of time the kids get in there in the kitchen and you've got hot pots and pans, uh, you got the oven door open, uh, there's electric tools, you know, yeah. a lot of times people have the electric carvers, those are laying around. Yeah, sharp and knives. Sharp all knives. Things, yeah. All yeah. these things can lead to a dangerous situation where people can get injured. So when you go into that kitchen, do a safety check first. Yeah. Uh, make sure that when your pot handles are all turned away from the edges. Yeah, that's, um, that's dangerous. Keep the kids out. Um, make sure that you pay attention to things cooking. Uh, if you do, because sometimes people like to heat up grease. And if you would experience some sort of grease fire yes. in the kitchen, um, these things can get out of hand really quick. And the last thing you should do is try to throw water on something like that. There are, there are ways to control a small fire. Uh, one, by just sliding something flat over the top of maybe a burning pan, uh, keeping a fire extinguisher in the kitchen, uh, which if you do choose a fire extinguisher, understand that is, it's going to put the fire out, which is good. It's going to ruin everything. But it's going to, it's going to ruin everything. So yeah. if you don't get yourself in that situation the first hand, then you're going to be better off. But keeping a fire extinguisher handy, uh, if, but the last thing we want you to do is, is stay and, and fight that fire. If it's getting out of control, you need to dial 911, get everybody out of the home. Mike, I've, I've, I don't know, maybe don't even know where I've heard this, but what about like something like flour, like throwing flour on the fire or something like that to kind of... So baking and baking soda or flour are two things that you can throw on there to kind of, because you're basically you're trying to smother the fire. But honestly, if you have a big cookie sheet or something like that, a lot yeah. of times if you slide that over, the biggest mistake people a lot of times will make is they pick the pan up, uh, they try to take it over to the sink, and uh, they try to put water on that fire, and it just makes it worse, and it spreads right. quick. Right. Uh, so we don't want you to do that. We just want you to, if you can slide something over a small grease fire, that's fine. Yeah. Do that. Is that the biggest thing you guys yeah. see around Thanksgiving is grease fires? Uh, grease fires, fires. Uh, unattended cooking where yeah. they were distracted. Uh, they went to do something with the kids. Something was on the stove top or in the stove. Uh, you know, nobody likes it when they burn the rolls. But how many times have you had the pan pulled out and the rolls look good from the top? Yeah, you smell something burning, you turn them the over and they're a little black on the bottom. Yeah. So yeah. it's just we get we lose our attention span. Uh, there's just so much going on. There's just so on much going on at the holidays. Family members that you haven't seen for a long time. Oh, yeah, you get to talk, and yeah. the next thing you know, uh, you got a, a mess in the kitchen. Now, Mike, one of my favorite things at Thanksgiving, along with probably almost everybody, is the turkey. And, and I know that last year I called you and said, hey, Mike, I want to get a turkey fryer. And you, first thing you thought is that's a terrible idea. It is a terrible idea and for so, you, especially. So to get a instead fryer. of a, a grease turkey fryer, I followed your fryer. I followed your advice and got an infrared turkey fryer. And was it good? It was delicious. Exactly. So, but, but let's talk about those folks that do have to have that. <laughs> 
six gallons of grease with the turkey in it right inside the garage. I, I have seen people uh, do this wrong so many times in my life. And they cook them in everything from actual commercial style deep fryers yeah. to do it in a trash can. <laughs> so there's all kinds of things that people see on YouTube. But yeah. here's, here's the thing that, that you need to think about is if you're going to deep fry the turkey, it's very important that you thaw this out completely, completely, completely and dry it out. Yep. Because once you heat your oil up in that cooker, if you drop a turkey in there that's got moisture in it or it's still frozen in any way, it's going to cause a reaction with that grease. It's going to boil over. And it's going to start a huge fire. Yeah. I do this demonstration every year, and it is enough fire to burn your house down in minutes. And a matter of fact, I've seen a couple people choose to do that when they were deep frying the turkey inside the house on the back porch uh, close to the doorway of the home. The fire erupted and literally destroyed their home uh, on Thanksgiving. Now, now I've we're familiar with your demonstration. I lose money every year because I bet that you're gonna gonna catch yourself on fire. Is this the year that you're gonna actually catch yourself on fire? Uh, you know, I'll be doing this live on TV uh, coming uh, Thanksgiving morning. I hope not. I know that some people are probably tuning in to learn how to deep fry a turkey it's safely. It's kind of like watching a NASCAR race. You don't watch for the racing. Well, you know, there is some truth to that. And, and I think that's why the news stations invite me in. It's good for ratings. Yeah, I mean, they probably sell true. more advertisement now, on that morning than any other. Now, morning. I have been behind the scenes a little on these, and I know you've been researching the perfect formula for a turkey explosion. You think you've got it this year? I, I do. I think I have it down uh, to, to show exactly what will happen. It, it's taken me a few years of doing this, but... You know, the big thing is, is like you talked about the infrared cooker. Yeah. It's safe. It's oilless. It's that clean. Um, you know, oil fryers, you know, people take that oil. It gets all over the place. Then they got to have somewhere to dump it. Yeah. Do they dump it down the drain? Do they dump right. it in the yard? I mean, I've seen people dump this stuff everywhere. So if you go with an infrared cooker, and they're not much more money. I right. mean, they're pretty inexpensive. A little yeah. over 100 bucks, and you can get you a, a nice infrared cooker, and it'll make you a delicious turkey for Thanksgiving. So what about... You know, it's going to be cold, rainy. Is it okay to do this in the garage? No. No, you on the deck. Don't even do it on a deck. Unless you've got a concrete type of patio. How far from the house? Uh, you should be out at least 10, 15 feet away from the house. Okay. Um, because when these fires erupt in these cookers, they're rather large. And if you have it in a confined space like a garage, as you mentioned, um, it's going to spread throughout that garage rather quickly. It could severely injure yourself, uh, family members. And it's just a huge mess. It's just best to avoid that completely. And what do you do if you've taken all the safety precautions and you're out in the middle of the yard and you do, and, and it starts on fire. Now you've got a propane tank. You're not able to get close enough to turn it off. What are your suggestions? Do you just let it burn out? Call the fire department? What, what do you, you think? Can, you can call. I mean, if it's not going to hurt anything, our biggest hazard at that point becomes the propane tank, obviously. Yeah. So if you feel like it's something that you need to call the fire department on that you just can't handle and you're fearful of, of what's going to happen, call 911. Uh, you know, you're you're going to join the club of people that call us for help, and we're used to that. And we yeah. would rather you call us for help than not do anything, and then something tragic happen on Thanksgiving. Okay. Now, if I was going to show up to the Pruitt family Thanksgiving, I was kind of a part of the Pruitt family Christmas last you year. You were. You were. I got a nice but, gift from my family. With the uh, Pruitt family Thanksgiving, I walk through the door. Where do I find Mike? Do I find him in the recliner watching football or in the kitchen cooking? <laughs> you're not going to find me cooking. You're probably going to naturally. You're probably going to find me in the recliner, which is a natural state for me. There's no doubt but about that. Then you that. feel like you're at work. I do. I, I thought do you were feel, taking the day off. Well, I am, but I'm asleep usually rather quickly, especially after I eat. Yeah, you know, that but, tends uh, to do that. But yeah, I, the older I get, the quicker I fall Are you asleep. one of those guys where you sit in the recliner with your eyes closed, football game on, the kids come in and change the channel, and you're like, hey, I was watching that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the good thing is, is our kids and my family all have all gotten older now. Yeah, so they all uh, watch too. So, you know, and, and you know how kids are today. They're on their phones. They're not watching TV. <laughs> right, they're not interested. They're, they're on their phones and what's going right, on. So right. I never have to have to deal with that too much. So what's the what's the must-have at the Pruitt Thanksgiving for you? What do you, what's, what do you look forward to the most? Um, my mom's rolls. The yeast rolls, yeah, I can eat so many of those and tell them about you to explode. But their homemade yeast rolls is a family recipe that's been handed down over years. So are you years. still on this diet that you've been on for a while? Or you're taking a day off from that, uh, John. I'm taking a little <laughs> bit of a day off, but it's okay. Am I looking like? Am, no, am you I look looking good, okay? Mark. You look good. You look good. All right, but no, that's that that and pumpkin pie. Oh, I'm. You know, I, I got to have pumpkin whip cream pie. Whipped cream or no whipped cream? Oh, lots of whipped cream. So I'll, just a little bit of pie with a lot of whipped cream. I'll, I'll take that can. 
and I'll spray it on the pumpkin pie and then I'll take that can and I'll spray a bunch in my <laughs> mouth. Not, not like sucking on the can, but you know what I'm saying is you spray that the original whipped cream in your mouth. Now, isn't that dangerous though, Mike? Well, if you're up there, like wouldn't they discourage huffing of the can? <laughs> yes, that can be very dangerous. But like if you're holding it back and spraying okay. it in your mouth, yeah, that's right. one. So do it under adult supervision. Adult supervision. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which my wife's there. So oh, well, we're okay. good. She, she won't let me do anything bad. Right. But those are the two things must have rolls and yeah. pumpkin pie on. Yeah. And, and you know, the one thing that people that they got that I want them to do, and it always comes back to this every message we put out is making sure you have working smoke alarms in your home. Yeah. Now, you may have one in the kitchen, and the kitchen is not necessarily a good place for that because it goes off all the time. And if you still have the older nine volt battery mm -hmm. uh, smoke alarms, People tend to pop that battery out because it's a nuisance. Yeah. And your kids... Or they are, need it for the remote control. Yeah, they might need it for the remote control. Um, kids are usually the first ones to rat their parents out uh, whenever you go talk safety with them really? about their kids removing... Or yeah. about their parents right. removing the batteries. So don't put those in the kitchen necessarily. The nice thing is they come out with the 10-year batteries now. You mm -hmm. can't disable those. So, right, right. Um, but have working smoke alarms. What about, what, Mike, what about if somebody doesn't have smoke alarms? How well, can they get some? So your options are you can go to your local fire department. Many of the local fire departments will give you at least one free smoke alarm. Um, and if you can't get a free one, go to any of the big box stores. And there's a, a huge variety of smoke alarms out there. So go into the big box store, you're going to see all different price range. It's important that no matter what money you have to spend, that you just get a working smoke alarm. But Whether it's you, a $10 you, one or a $70 right. one, you can, it's you gonna can spend you, you can spend 20 30 40 bucks. They even have nice ones now that'll like alert your phone, yeah. um, just like a ring doorbell would uh, if... Uh, if you, if you do have one that goes off in your home. So it's whatever you can afford, but the important thing is having a working smoke alarm on every level of your home. So biggest travel day of the year, day before Thanksgiving, a lot of people hitting the roads uh, to go visit those relatives. What, what are some things folks should think about having in their car before that road trip, regardless of what the weather is? I think it's important to plan your trip. Uh, you know, look, see what the traffic conditions are. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of construction going on across Indiana as we're making major road improvements. Mm -hmm. And so check, see what the routes look like. Mm -hmm. um, have that plan in place. And then the weather, I mean, we've been pretty fortunate right now. Uh, before Thanksgiving, the weather's kind of warmed up a little bit. But who knows what the next, you know, few days could bring, could yeah. change our weather. And so making sure that your car is fueled up, that it's been properly maintained, um, and then, you know, you and I have talked about this. What do you keep in the car? Right. You know, what are some things that you like to keep in the car? You know, of course, extra water in case you get stranded. Make sure your phone's charged or you have a phone charger, jumper cables, ice scraper, something to, to move snow off your vehicle in case you come across snow. Um, you know, just snacks, things that... Oh, I like you, snacks in the car. you do. If you find yourself stranded on the side of the road, be prepared to be there for a while and understand how dangerous it is to be along the side of the highway. Um, so if you do find yourself stranded, stay in your car with your seatbelt on. Don't get outside and stay in. Now, if you have to change that tire, I would recommend driving on that flat tire as long as you can uh, to an exit ramp, to, to a parking lot, to somewhere where you can be safe to change that tire. And I have seen a lot of families uh, as you're driving down the highway, you see someone stranded. I've literally seen families move clear outside onto the other side of a barrier away from the interstate, away from the car yeah. completely. And, and that's and that not a bad awesome. idea. I mean, yeah. I, I don't expect people to go out and freeze, right. uh, you know, in sub-zero temperatures and do that. But, you know, if the weather's permissible and you get out of the car yeah. and move off to the side and get away from the car, there's nothing wrong with that. So many times we see people oblivious to the dangers of standing along the highway and they'll have their kids out there standing behind the car while they're changing the tire. And then there's not a worse place they could be. No, so, I mean, it's hard enough for uh, public safety. Yeah. When we're yeah, out there, we have, we have, we have flashing lights and, and everything going on. Right. And people still run yeah. into us. Yeah. So, so keep that in mind. So Mike, we're coming up a minute to go here. Thanksgiving holidays, everybody's coming together. Just pay attention. Yeah. Have a, have a plan for your cooking, have a plan for family. You know, when they're coming over, keep track of what's going on in the home where the kids are, give them something to do away from the kitchen yeah. uh, so that they're not in there, uh, you know, getting themselves in trouble. And where can people drop off their unused pumpkin pies? Uh, at uh, my house. I won't give that ad. Let's get all <laughs> so Mike wants us to give the ad. Tell you what, you drop them off at the state police post <laughs> here in Indianapolis, <laughs> and, we'll and we'll make sure that they, they will make sure you put my name on it 
and I will come to the state police post and get those pies yeah. and, and share them. Yeah, that's a, that is a great idea. Let me handle Mike's pie before he eats it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. Uh, Sealed package pies only. Hey, you've been tuning into the Indiana State Police Roadshow. Guest Captain Mike Pruitt, Wayne Township Fire Department. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving and be, be extra safe.